and welcome to Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Furrow. I'm Karen McCarthy. On the programme, a risky business. We talk safety on farm in relation to bikes, with particular focus on the quad, four-wheeler friend or foe. The stats are a worry. The costs to ACC for quad bike injuries run into the millions. More than 800 accident victims on farms each year. On average, five die. Is this an acceptable toll? And what to do? Education versus enforcement as the Labor Department gets into another campaign of spot checks on farms. Warning, we will prosecute. In the studio with me this week from the Federated Farmers Dairy Executive Kevin Robinson from Thames Good to be and here. from Hamilton, Waikato University sociologist Dr Maxine Campbell who led a major research project on quad bike safety and has been advocating for tougher rules ever since. Hello Karen. Tell us about the project. You're not a farmer, you're not even a rural person. How did this come about? Uh, every year a, an organisation called the uh, Child Accident Prevention Foundation of New Zealand puts up scholarships for grad students to do research on child safety and, and you can choose your own particular topic. Quad bikes were in the news a lot uh, that particular summer so I had two grad students who were interested in researching that and we did the project together over the summer months of 2005, 2006. There was a very high profile case that summer. I know there's a little girl down the line had, had uh, come off a, f a family quad bike. There was, the and that is what made the t subject so topical at the time. And we, uh, after the publication of that initial report, I tracked uh, any changes that might be evident in farming stats and behaviour following the, the court case um, where that little child was um, killed on the quad bike. Just, just briefly, can you just um, r refresh people's memory of, of that case? It was a, a four-year-old girl who had been on in the farm workplace with her dad. He took a call on his cell phone and she thought she'd help dad and jumped on the quad bike to bring the cows in and the, the bike flipped and she was killed instantly. This was an adult quad bike she was yes, riding? it was. Uh, it weighed, I think, 367 kilos. And she was crushed, I take it? Yes, she was four years old. Now, quite extraordinarily, the father in that case was, was hauled before the courts, wasn't he, on a, on a manslaughter charge? He was, charged under the Crimes Act. Uh, and there were a lot of comments in the media from the farming community and from urban communities, and as you can imagine, there was a lot of differences of opinion. Uh, the farming community rallied round that particular family, and part, the key part of his defence was that it was normal practice on the farm for children to be doing these sorts of things. And many farmers stood up in court and said, yes, they did that as well. And if you can prove it's normal practice, then the charge of negligence doesn't stand up. So he was acquitted. Kevin, you remember that case? I do, yes. Was there a lot of talk amongst the farming community at the time? Uh, yes, quite considerably. Uh, because, as Maxine said, it it's probably is a standard practice. I, I'm not so sure that uh, I'd, I'd go down to four-year-olds uh, commonly riding motorbikes. I, you know, in my time, I haven't experienced people as young as that, but I, I, in some cases, that there is, you know, that does happen. And, and was that a case that sent ripples through the farming community at the time? It was particularly tragic, as I say, the little girl just hopped on but but the fact the father was was brought before the courts and, and charged with with manslaughter was pretty significant and I think unprecedented at the point that point well yes and and like everyone's concerned about this issue and uh, you know federated farmers is committed to health and safety of of all farmers in New Zealand so we've been doing a lot of work uh, since at, at you know board level to uh, try and uh, mitigate um, you know these these accidents, and and that's basically through working with other industry group partners, and um, you know trying to get farmers educated uh, and parents educated on on how to um, safely uh, have children on on motorbikes or using motorbikes. Maxine, do you think there's a place ever for children to be on bikes, on quad bikes, on the farm? I mean, they're, they're active members of the family. It, it's, it's home, but it's also a workplace. The, I guess the lines get a little blurred there sometimes. They do, particularly on a farm. What's the home and what's the workplace? Uh, all the manufacturers, all the guidelines say children have no place on the bikes. They shouldn't be riding them under the age of 15. Uh, some say 16 on the manufacturer's guidelines. So uh, from that point of view alone, I think, no, they don't have any place on adult-sized uh, quad bikes. 
in the farm workplace in particular? What do farmers say to that? I, I think there's a wider range of um, aspects we should be looking at here because uh, you know, kids don't only ride uh, bikes on farms, there's trail rides, there's motocross, so kids uh, you know, are exposed to motorbikes um, and they ride them at a very young age outside the farm as well and, and a lot of accidents that actually get, happen at trail rides because they happen on farm get, get put down to actually farm accidents when they're actually not. And so more recreational actually. More recreational, so you know there, there's a, a different side to, to that as well. You know, and as I said before, we're committed to um, safety of, of all people riding um, on farm, but yeah, um, <clears throat> we've just got to be careful that uh, it, it's just not farm. And it's, I think it's more uh, sometimes a parenting issue rather than actually a you know, farming issue. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that we, you know, we turn a blind eye, we've still got to educate farmers and, and their children how to best ride motorbikes if they're going to be on them. And, and although the guidelines say uh, n nobody under the age of 15, you can't expect anybody to hit 15 and just know how to ride them. So it makes sense that they actually have access to them for training purposes at the very least before the age of 15. Uh, it, it would be, I think, irresponsible to say, OK, 15, off you go. Uh, so I agree with Kevin that there is a place for um, children younger than 15 being on bikes in various capacities. In terms of the recreational factor, I do think that they are more likely to have protective gear and be on size and age appropriate machinery in those recreational circumstances than in the farm workplace where it is an adult sized quad bike that's designed to replace the tractor on the farm a lot of in a lot of cases. It's a good point because I have I've read even quad bike salesmen have, have said that recreational users are more inclined to have a helmet, <clears throat> to have the goggles, to have the body protection, whereas farmers one fella said 90% of the time with regard to helmets, just for example, farmers will say to him, I'm not wearing that bloody thing, gets in the way. That would be quite typical, I suppose. Uh, look, I agree, uh, yeah, but they still, they still have accidents and, and what we're, we're trying to um, you know, get across on farmers that to, to educate uh, you know, farmers and parents that uh, you know, they need safety equipment and, and maintenance probably, uh, and I think Maxine's identified in a report that you know, there's issues around maintenance, you know, a tyre that's sort of only half up or you know, something that's not quite right on the bike which you know, causes an accident. So you know, safety gear is good, but if you've got a bike that's not operating or, or being op operated incorrectly, uh, you have your accident. Is, so. is, is there still no uh, mechanism that ensures once a quad bike is bought and on the farm that it has regular maintenance? Is, there, there's, there's no warrant no, of fitness? There's no law, no law or warrant of fitness. Mm. It's up to the farmers to do the maintenance on their bikes. And of course under health and safety regulation it's, you know, you, you really need to do it, but there's no one policing that. And I guess too, once a manufacturer's warranty, whatever two or three years has expired, then maintenance might slide. Uh, yeah, it could do. Like all farmers are different, so they, you know, they see it differently. Do you have quads yourself on your on your farm? Uh, yes, we do. A necessary tool these days? Uh, yes, in a lot of cases, uh, it, it depends on on different farms, uh, you know, and there, there could be four or five on one farm. Bigger farms now uh, are tending uh, for for economic reasons to go to two wheelers. Uh, so, you know, because quads are expensive and uh, they take a lot, you know, more expensive to run. So, mm. um, but yeah, they have got a, a definite place in, in farming in New Zealand. And I certainly wouldn't ever call for a ban on them. They're a real workhorse on, mm. the, on the farm. Uh, it's just a matter of how they're used. And they're more suitable in dairy farming, I think, than in high country <coughs> farming and so forth. They're designed for flat land. More on that in a moment. Coming up, more on kids on farm bikes. They ride on them with us, sometimes on their own, and in some tragic cases, as we've heard, with deadly consequences. Where do you draw the line? Stay with us for more Straight Talk. Welcome back to Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Furrow. I'm Karen McCarthy. We're back with Dr Maxine Campbell and Kevin Robinson. The stats, each year 850 people are injured in quad bike accidents on farms, five are killed. It's estimated 35 farmers come off their bikes every day and nine are hurt badly enough to have to have time off work to recover. 
It's a big issue, isn't it? We've been talking about children on farm bikes, but across the board, farmers, it's, it's a dangerous place, isn't it, out there on the quad? It's certainly one of the most dangerous workplaces in the country is the farm. That's acknowledged in, in all the literature. Uh, and we do know that farmers hate the helmets that they have to wear on their quad bikes. And I remember I was extremely fond of uh, motorbikes when I was younger and happened to be riding them at the time we bought in cycle, motorbike sel helmet laws. Uh, I hated that law when it came in because it just completely changed the experience of going for a motorbike ride. Uh, it must be worse still for farmers because they're trying to do all sorts of jobs while they're using the bikes to help them. Uh, so I have some appreciation of why they hate them. However, if, if it was my husband out there and he didn't want to wear the helmet, I would tell him, well, if you choose that, I choose not to look after you when you get hurt. Is she right, Kevin? Do farmers hate helmets? Is that Bit of yeah, a I'm, not, I'm not sure whether they hate helmets. It, it's just the inconvenience and, 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 and the culture of not having to put them on. What's, it's the, what's the problem with a helmet? You wouldn't normally get on a bike without a helmet on. Well, yeah, it's, it's just that you've got to actually put it on where, you, you know, like you normally just jump on without putting it on. Yeah, and as I say, it's part of, the, part of culture not having to do it. So, and, but, but I think uh, it's important to point out that as uh, farms increase in size and there's a lot of uh, uh, younger people working on farms and bigger farms that, that a lot of you know, managers are make, ensuring that their the young staff or, or older staff for that fact uh, is part of uh, an increased awareness of health and safety to wear those helmets and I, I think the biggest uh, barrier is actually probably older farmers that you know that are just working uh, on, the, on the farms by themselves they might have a bit of casual labour but you know they, they've never seen the, uh, the need to wear them and, and they're probably, you know, they're the ones that are really going to be hard to actually get to, to wear helmets. And I suppose a lot of them, you know, the, the older farmers don't actually travel that fast. It's the younger ones that tend to, tend to speed a bit. Uh, you know, I've, I've experienced it and I've had to discipline staff in the past when, you know, I've said, look, you don't go over 30 k's, keep the speed down and you see them speeding around, you know, so it's, it's just part of, um, you know, having labour and, and, and how you deal with it, I suppose. It's individual responsibility, isn't it? It's taking responsibility for your own safety, I suppose, as much as anything. Well, yes, and, and, and your staff safety. <laughs> You know, but you also yeah. have to see it as a responsibility and I think the farming culture, particularly the older generation, th their idea is I haven't done it all my life and I've been fine. It's just not part of their culture and therefore they don't see it as a responsibility. You've had staff over the years on your farms. I mean, have you, have you enforced the issue with them? Have you said don't do as I do, do as I say? Yes, well, you've had to because, you know, that, that, that changes the culture probably a little bit when you've got staff and health and safety and, you know, you're responsible. It's probably just going back a bit to what Maxine was saying about, you know, they don't feel a responsibility. When, well, when you get staff, when you're by yourself, mm. you know, you tend not to go there. But when, once you have staff, you feel that responsibility and, of course, you know, you, you, you tend to focus... Um, on those staff and, and the rules and regulations around employing them. Now you so. said you were in the South Island, quite a different kind of farming landscape at the end of last year and it was quite, the culture down there was quite different. Ve very much so, I, I didn't see anyone there not wearing a helmet on farm. You know, that, that, that was right through from, from uh, managers to owners to, to employees. And, and why was that do you think? Why, why are things so different down, down south? I think it's part of what I was just explaining about once you, you know, your farms get bigger and you, you've got more staff, your responsibilities, you tend to, to look at different aspects of farming and that's when you're employing that, that many people, you know, you, you, you concentrate more on, on those sort of issues. It's not just helmets, of course. What are some of the other risks with quad bikes? That must be something you like looked at as well in your report. Although I have to say we look just at children. Um, not at adult use of, of quad bikes and children are often injured uh, as bystanders or as passengers rather than riding the bikes and in fact that was more common. Um, they don't ride the bikes as commonly as their passengers on them or, or just bystanders in the farm workplace uh, and, and they would get hit or run over by the bikes or fall off the bikes. Um, and, and part of that with very young children was because of a lack of childcare options. So some farmers would weld 
baby seats onto the bikes so they could take the youngsters with them. Uh, and that immediately puts them at risk from being on the bike, but also from being in the farm workplace. And rollover. I know that's one of the big safety mm. issues they talk about. These are big machines and they weigh a heck of a lot. They've got a, a narrow wheelbase, a high centre of gravity. They can, they can flip quite easily, can't they, Kevin? Well, yes, they can. And they're all different. But yeah, as soon as you start adding weight on one corner or one side or, or you know, and, and, and Maxine was explaining about putting a, a baby seat on one side, you know, that, that shifts the centre of gravity straight away. And if, if you're on hilly country, as soon as you get, get, get one side or something, it, 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 the weight just pulls it over. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had friends that have had experiences of that. So, and they've been injured, you know, but you just sort of, um, throwing something on and not being aware of the dangers. So uh, basically, you know, the manufacturers have got recommendations written all over the bike and, and when you buy it, they're there, uh, you know, and, and then if you, uh, if you don't adhere to them, well then, yeah, there are consequences. So, uh, it's, and as I said, it's just about education, about making sure that farmers, you know, know what the risks are and dangers. There are some agricultural guidelines that were put together in a cooperative effort by uh, a whole lot of industry stakeholders, including Federated Farmers, Deer Stalkers Association, and places like Department of Labour and ACC. And they are guidelines for the safe operation of ATVs, and they're a major part of any educational campaign. What worries me is that they were published in 2002, a decade ago, and we're still having the same problems. So I do question whether education alone is, is sufficient to stem the tide. Kevin, you mentioned manufacturers. I, I mean, is there something they could do to make quad bikes safer? Uh, no, prob probably not, because, um, you know, unless they make them wider wheelbase, and there are some that are wider wheelbase, you know, I, I think it's like, it's like a car, you know, you get in a car and if you don't adhere to the manufacturer's driving instructions, it's, there's going to be consequences, so. A lot of the modifications that you might do to make them safer would actually make it more difficult to use them for the job you want to use them for. It would interfere with the, the farmer's work, if you like. So if they're used... As they're intended to be used, there will be a lot fewer problems, I think. But, but we don't stick to the official guidelines or the manufacturer's guidelines. I guess farmers would push their machines, wouldn't they? That's the thing, they've got you know, rough terrain, they've got to get somewhere fast. Maybe they, they wouldn't necessarily be adhering strictly to the guidelines. Uh, well, every, every farm is different. Mm. Uh, you know, like in, in, in my case, um, you know, I, I restricted the staff to 30 k's on the farm, and if I ever seen them going faster than that, you know, they had to walk to get the cows. That was a simple solution, you know, that I said, well, if... if and, and, you know, quite surprisingly, young people hated walking, and I couldn't understand that. I was thinking, <laughs> well, hey, why not get some exercise? But, you know, they, they hated walking. So, you know, that was an easy way to bring them back in line. Uh, but every farm is different, you know. It's it's just um, you know trying to f to to get the message across that there's there's big risks and and, and consequences for for you know Ill, you know ill use or or bad use of motorbikes in, in, in some circumstances. I'm really interested in, <coughs> in the what seems like a sea change in the, in the South Island and I wonder if there's a gender influence going on there because after we published that initial report I had inquiries from all sorts of uh, agencies and individuals wanting to use it for um, training and educational programs and so forth, or to argue with their spouses about why their children shouldn't be on the quad bikes. And a lot of them were from the South Island and a lot of them were from females. So I wonder if, if that's what's begun some groundswell, or, or, in addition to the fact that there are oh. big business and there are employer responsibilities. More from our guests after the break, including the Department of Labor's harder line on prosecutions, taking its campaign and its inspectors on farm. Are random checks and spot fines really the way to go? Back after the break. Hello, you're back with Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Furrow. We're here with Maxine Campbell and Kevin Robinson talking quad bike safety. What you were just saying before the break, Maxine, about, about women maybe leading a charge for change, what, where do you think that's come from? What's driven that? From the women themselves, why they are in particular are 
less in inclined to want their children on quad bikes or on the farm workplace. I'm not sure what triggered it. I'm happy that it has happened. Um, and I just hope that it spreads. They may be the best way to ensure that children are removed from the, the level of risk that they currently face on the farm. Do you think there's a growing awareness just, just generally, not just amongst the women folk in the rural sector, but, but the blokes as well, that, that this is a risky business? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just what Maxine was saying about industry groups getting together and, and, you know, and putting out a, um, you know, guidelines for, for operation, it's, it's just part of, a, I suppose, a, a big picture that's, that's happening with education around, um, you know, quad bike use. And, and just going back to the South Island story, uh, I think that's just part of it, just more education and you know, you know, you talk about how many accidents there are but there's probably increasing numbers of motorbikes mm. uh, in New Zealand as, as you know, dairy farms increase and uh, you know, there's uh, more recreational use. So, so I, I think we're, we're making progress and uh, you know, as long as we keep working and, and, and getting information out to farmers on how best to use them and you know, safety Expect. So I think we will make progress. Kevin, though, we've been doing that for more than a decade since those original guidelines came out and, and still children are dying on the bikes and being injured. And I just wonder how long, how patient should we be? Uh, and I can't help comparing it with the education campaigns around cycle helmets and seat belts and drink driving. And it wasn't until we also legislated that behaviours really changed. I'm not sure I agree with the 10-year um, the thing. I think really uh, we've only just recently, as especially Federated Farmers, you know, a couple of years ago, have actually jumped on the bandwagon and got involved in, in, in making sure that that um, you know, we got the information out there and, and, and tried a concerted campaign for better safety. Well, so would it help though if government did get more involved, if, if there was legislation, if guidelines weren't voluntary but compulsory and then farmers would basically you know, have to well, you could say they are now because the Labor Department are going on farm, you know. And, but they can't uh, be on every farm. I know or, that, yeah. but, but if they get out and do a few, it's going to, uh, uh, I suppose, it will send messages mm. to farmers that they're there and they've got to do something about it. But uh, you're not actually breaking any law to have your children on the bikes. There's no law against that. And until there is, <clears> the, there's no incentive to stop doing it. And unless you stop doing it, the risk is still there. And, uh, you know, we hear politicians come back, well, we can't police a law like that. Well, I don't know any law that is policed 24 hours a day. Well, you're not in a police state. We have laws, and if we break them, we pay the consequences. And so until it is a law, there's no real incentive to stop these, these risky behaviours. So, so how do you actually, um, you know, bring in a law that... You People aren't allowed to ride motorbikes until they're 10 or 12 well, or 15 when, was, when they use them in motocross. So that's going to cut out a lot of recreational That's not use. what I'm it's suggesting. I'm suggesting we go with the guidelines as much as possible. And since 1960, we've had a law that says child, children shouldn't be on the tractors. The, the quad bikes are replacing the tractors as, as workhorses on the farm. So I think the same sort of legislation should apply to the quad bikes. Is that something farmers would resist, I wonder? Uh, yeah, I, I think they would, you know, and we've talked about culture on farm and, and the culture on farm is, I suppose, is un unique culture where people are, in, you know, and kids, and it's not only uh, kids, it, no. it's farm workers as well and adults, you know, uh, uh, are using and uh, interacting on farm, doing w whether it's um, helping out on the farm or just, you know, um, doing recreational stuff. So uh, th there's a culture there that's, that, that's come from many years back. But uh, yeah, and 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 I and I, you know, I think uh, farmers would resist that. But probably in in no greater way than we resisted seat belts and and changing our attitudes to drink driving. We needed a culture change, and and it was a combination of of educational campaigns, publicity, media campaigns, and a change in legislation that achieved eventually the culture change. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Drink driving is different different issue here. I think there's a, there were a lot more deaths with drink driving yes. than there is, you know, yes. accidents or uh, well, deaths on fatalities on farms. I guess just by talking about it hopefully is, is a way to raise awareness and, and that people out there who are using these bikes and, and have their kids on them or, or not, even just for themselves, will, will be a little safer out there. 
Oh, we're already talking about it, and you know, as I said, we're we're, we're um, and you know, there's all, there's good campaigns happening out there, and and uh, we we hope to continue and educate farmers about safety on on farm bikes and on farm. Something for everybody to think about. Thanks so much. You've been watching Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Furrow. Thank you to my guests, Kevin Robinson and Dr Maxine Campbell. And as always to you at home for joining us. I'm Karen McCarthy, back next edition with more Straight Talk. <laughs>